You know, when we talk about the drawer motion on the stifle of a dog or cat, we often do this kind of motion with our hands to indicate how much motion there might have been in that knee. The truth is, this isn't a drawer motion. And sometimes when we overdo things, when we're examining a stifle, we create too much motion and it feels like the patient actually has a torn ACL because we feel too much motion. With the limb held in a natural standing position, the one hand is placed just above the stifle and all it does is stabilize the femur. It does not move. The other hand is placed high on the tibia with the forefinger on the tibial crest and the thumb at the top behind the tibial plateau. And all I'm doing is applying pressure with my thumb to slide that tibial plateau forward and I allow it to relax back. Apply pressure, pushing the tibial plateau forward and allowing it to slide back. That's all that I'm doing. Let's look at some of the common mistakes. The right hand, the one that's on the tibia. The index finger is on the tibial crest. Some of the inappropriately done ones, the index finger is much further down the tibial crest, causing the tibia to rotate as you apply pressure on the thumb. In other cases, the thumb is positioned too far down the tibia rather than being behind the tibial plateau and that will cause the stifle to move into extension as you push forward on the thumb. Of course having both thumb and forefinger too far down the tibia will also cause some abnormal movement in there and finally, one of the common mistakes is that the left hand, the one that is on the femur, just stabilizing the femur, is actually used to try and push the femur in the opposite direction of the tibia. And that will also give the impression that there is more motion in the joint than there really is. When I had my mobile practice and I'd come to a hospital to repair a torn cruciate on a patient, and I would get there, examine the patient, and no, there was no torn cruciate in that patient. And the veterinarian would say, but I, I swear I had a positive drawer test when I examined him last week. So I would always ask the veterinarian to demonstrate to me how they did their drawer test. So I learned a lot at that time. One of the consistent parameters of a false positive that I noticed is if when you are doing the drawer test, there's a lot of motion in the foot, you are doing it wrong.